I am Sarah Fite. I am with the State Museum of Natural History. I'd like to thank Matt and the rest of the SciComm committee for putting this event on today. We're thrilled to have all of you here at UNL. So, the museum's mission. Um, we are, take great pride in our collection strength at the Natural History Museum here at UNL. Um, we preserve and collect specimens. We also have um, our researchers and we do education. So my talk today is going to focus specifically on some of the educational mission of the State Museum. We are not just the building Morrill Hall here on campus, although if you're going to the reception later tonight, you will get to see our um, building here on campus. We also are Asheville Fossil Beds, as well as Trailside Museum, and then our research collections are housed over in Nebraska Hall on the fourth and fifth um, floors of that building on campus. So we are a family of museums. You're seeing here a picture of um, our vertebrate paleontology lab. We have, um, also have entomology as well as zoology, just to name three out of our seven divisions. The museum has about 14 million objects, and less than 1% are currently on view at our museum at any one time. Um, Dr. Kirk Johnson, who's the director of the Smithsonian Museum of Natural History, um, told us when he came for a visit not too long ago that the museum has, in his opinion, one of the best collections of Cenozoic mammal fossils anywhere in the world. So we are proud of that, and our goal is to try to let as many people know that fun fact about us as possible. Um, so we are extra proud of our VP collection, but we also have the um, second largest parasitology collection anywhere. Um, and we also house um, a scarab beetle collection from the Smithsonian as well. So those are just some of the sort of highlights of our collection. So here you're looking at a picture of Ashfall Fossil Beds, which is out in Royal, Nebraska. You see there a scientist um, currently digging in the um, Hubbard Rhino Barn. So Ashfall is a site, um, about 12 million years ago, there was a volcanic eruption in Idaho and a huge cloud of ash drifted over the country eastward. And so a lot of animals at a watering hole near Royal Nebraska um, died, and so here they're being, we're still doing excavations on that site. So faculty and students from all over the country come each summer to uncover um, rhinos. We like to say rhinos, not dinos in Nebraska, because we have hundreds of rhino fossils in our state. And then here is our museum out in Trailside, which is near Fort Robinson, out in the western part of the state. Um, what you're seeing there are two bull mammoths that got their tusks locked together, probably um, in a tussle over a young lady, not their smartest move, um, because they got stuck and they died that way. So we have that fossil record out in Trailside. And then, of course, like I said before, you'll get to see Morrill Hall later today. We have exhibits on evolution, rocks and minerals, of course, lots of fossils, dioramas of Nebraska wildlife as well at the museum. And we have the first um, full dome planetarium in the state as well. So we use that space for classes as well as public lectures, everything from Star Talks to Led Zeppelin to Big Bird. And we are now a Smithsonian affiliate, another fact that we're proud of. Okay, so that's a little bit about who we are. Now I want to talk about what we do. And the focus of this talk is going to be informal science education. So for the State Museum, we think of informal science education as learning that's taking place outside of traditional K through 12 classrooms. Um, you know, when people come to the State Museum, we want to recognize that they're coming sort of with previous visitor experiences. We want the educational programs that they attend to sort of honor the knowledge that they come with. And we're focusing a lot on building up critical, critical thinking skills and scientific literacy with all of our educational programs. So I'm going to run through a couple of those right now. We have Sunday with the Scientists, which if you were at the NABI workshop yesterday, you heard Nathan mention investigate science cafe and virtual tours so sunday with the scientist is one of our longest running educational programs that we do at the museum kathy french who is our educational 
education coordinator partners with a faculty member usually on campus to present aspects of their research to the public. This program takes place the third Sunday of every month and topics change each month. We've worked with Water for Food on campus, we've done things with nanoscience, Nebraska archaeology, spiders, um, you name it, we've probably covered it in the seven or so years that we've had the program going. Um, what's really special about Sunday with a Scientist is it's billed as a family science experience. So it's not just researchers talking to kids, but they're also reaching out to the parents or grandparents that brought them there, older and younger siblings. So we try to reach a broad audience with this particular program. There you see some. Another fun fact is Kathy's been doing Sunday with a Scientist so long that she's now had kids who have literally grown up in the program that come back every month. So as a museum, that's really cool for us to see. The next is a program that I work on, which is Investigate. It's kind of like Sunday with a Scientist Mini, um, where Kathy works with a lot of faculty. I tend to work with a lot of graduate students and undergraduate clubs on campus for Sunday with a Scientist, or excuse me, for Investigate. Here you see a little kid excited about learning about polymers. Um, so just like Sunday with a Scientist, the topics change every month. We've done owls and ladybugs and chromatography, um, polymers. So this program takes place over two hours, the second Saturday of every month. And we try to encourage students to think about one or two investigatable questions that they can use with visitors to explore. And kind of unlike Sunday with a Scientist, which has that broader age range, here we're really focusing in on activities geared for children in that six to 10 age range. And the museum produces a calendar each year. So the more Sunday with a scientist, or excuse me, the more investigates that children go to, they end up winning prizes after they've gone to three, six, and nine a year. So we're trying to encourage that repeat attendance in our audience for this program. And it's really a great way for students who are just starting out to kind of dip their toe into educational outreach because it's generally not quite as big of an undertaking as something like a Sunday with a Scientist, which tends to have multiple stations, multiple activities, takes place over a longer period of time. This is really sort of, I like to think of it as a lab both for visitors but also for the presenters. They have this idea, they want to work on how to express it to the public, and here's a really good place for them to just sort of test out one concept or idea that they'd like to get across. Next is our newest undertaking, which is also a program I do. It's called Science Cafe. This, we have a new director at the State Museum, Dr. Susan Weller, who in October will have been with us for one year. And her challenge when she came to the museum was that she wanted us to start thinking about science education, not just for K through 12, which we knew we were doing pretty well, um, but for adult audiences, because we really weren't offering anything to adults in our community who wanted to stay engaged with sciences and connect with researchers on campus. So. Science Cafe was born and takes place the third Thursday of every month and participants purchase a ticket that gets them dinner and an alcoholic beverage, so it is 21 and over. And then um, we have a scientist who leads an informal science discussion and question and answer session. And we really try to stress with our Science Cafe presenters that we do want this to be an informal discussion, not a traditional sort of lecture format, so that visitors can feel free to sort of ask questions about the topics that come up. So we've had um, Science Cafes on beer and the science of making a great beer. We were out at Zipline earlier this month touring their brewery. Um, we've also done Science Cafes on space law and we brought in venomous snakes of Nebraska into the planetarium and people got to check those out too. So we try to make this sort of a fun, informal event for adults who want to connect with other people who love science. And then the last program that I'm going to mention is our virtual field trips. And Tyler, do you want to read? You didn't know that slide was going to be in here. Um, but um, virtual field trips we offer for elementary school, middle school, and high school students. Um, we take very seriously at the museum that our name is the State Museum of Natural History. We want to reach every individual in Nebraska who has an interest in the natural sciences, and virtual field trips are one way for us to do this. If you're from Nebraska, you know what a rural state it is, and it's not always possible for students or other folks out in Shadron or Scotts Bluff or even North Platte to get to the museum. This is one where we can go into classrooms, libraries, we've even done programs in hospitals before to connect with people who are interested with, uh, with what we do in our collections. So these are fully um, engaged live tours that we're doing out in our gallery floor. So we roll out our, um, our screen, we have our educators there, 
and they are able to connect in live time talking with classes and visitors all throughout the state and even the country. We've done some programs in New York as well. And this is fun too because it for our evolution program, we've specifically been trying to target graduate students on campus who want the opportunity to participate in a virtual tour like Tyler um, and talk to students about what their research is and why they love science. That's one of the biggest points of feedback we've gotten from teachers who participate in our VFTs is they want their students to be exposed to scientists and see scientists doing current research. And so if, that's, if you're from UNL or if you're in the area and that's an interest of yours, I encourage you to get in touch with us because we'd love to talk to you about how we could do a short interview with you for our VFT program. What else? So the last thing I'm going to mention is a new initiative that we're really excited about and I think we do have another portal to the, do we have another portal to the public member here today? I talked to someone yesterday. Okay. So, Okay, so this is a new initiative at the museum. Um, the State Museum will become the first member museum in Nebraska. Our education coordinator, Kathy French, and our planetarium director are going out to the Pacific Science Center to get trained on the portal to the public method. It's a consortium of museums, zoos, science centers that are interested in learning how to present informal science education to the public. So our educators will get trained in the sort of pop net method and get connected to museums and other institutions across the country who are interested in this topic. But the really cool thing is they'll be able to come back and then do professional development training for scientists on how to present their science to the public. So we're getting trained in October and then this fall and spring that program will be kicking off here at the State Museum. So if you have an idea, if you're thinking, you know, I want to connect to K through 12 students but I have no idea how to take my research that's up here and make it accessible for other audiences. This this program is going to be specifically for, for you and we'll be able to help you think through those ideas and make your outreach goals become a reality. Okay.